So here's an interesting question for you, okay. Peter. Shoot. Have humans lost the art of human interaction and how will we humanize ourselves again? Absolutely. Generally speaking, of course, every single human is different and we all have different social skills. But we have introduced into our lives certain gadgets, devices, and not only gadgets and devices, but the amount of entertainment that is in our lives has meant that we never have to think and we never have to talk to another human again. We have at our disposal, I remember growing up, I mean, I'm starting to show my age, but you know, television was between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. and that was it, that was it. And we had two channels and that was it. And we were told to, to actually be careful not to watch too much television, even then. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. I mean, compare that to now where you can binge, and we talk about binging, on a, a Netflix series, and we can watch four series, four seasons in, in over two or three days. Uh, and I don't, know, I don't know about you, but when I get into one of those series and I'm really enjoying it, I just can't put it down. It's like a good book. You can't just put it down. But if I'm honest, what happens... Well, I'm giving that much attention to that distraction. Whatever that distraction is, it doesn't have to be a Netflix series, it can be anything else. What's happening when I'm focusing on that distraction? Am I really interacting with my loved ones? Am I interacting, am I giving time to my friends? Am I sending them nice messages? Am I, am I engaging with life? Am I building something useful? I have to be honest, I'm not. I'm just being a couch potato. I end up being a couch potato, I'm not inter interacting as humans. And if we multiply, coming back to the question, if we multiply that by, I don't know, in, in, in a big city, there might be five million people. If three million people are doing that, we have a very strong argument to say that we have diminished our human interaction. Now, is that, it, it, it's also shifted because we've taken our human face-to-face -face interaction and in a sense we also have multiplied it in the cyberverse, <laughs> in the universe out there, in the ether, in social media, we're always interacting with each other. Not very nicely all the time, but we're interacting with each other. We're communicating. But that communication is somewhat distorted. It's not real. It's, it's a little bit like watching an, a family photograph album. You look at the pictures, and in that, in that, those pictures, there's usually everybody smiling and everything positive has been captured. It's not real. It doesn't tell you how hard it was to wake up in the morning. It doesn't tell you the difficulties of life. So that's the, the problem with social media. It only presents a very nice picture rarely something negative and if it's negative we don't we don't really like it so we, we, we wouldn't be too attracted to that so yes yes to the short question the short answer to your question is absolutely human interactions are suffering in actual fact i would dare to say when you look at the way people used to express in the night themselves in, in in the 1920s 1920s when i'm talking 100 years ago was at a higher level than how we express ourselves today as, as a society in terms of our vocabulary and how articulate we are. So we may think that we are very clever, but actually we are dumber than a hundred years ago, especially in, in terms of human interactions. And I'm really interested in this question from the perspective of children. And I know we've been having a lot of conversations about this lately, and I've been speaking with a lot of educators around the world around the differences we're seeing in children and how they interact. Um, I mean, just the other day I went out to dinner and there was a young, it was a family with, uh, I would say, young adult children who were on the headphones, um, having dinner, watching their show, what the parents were talking together, but yeah. these young adults were doing something that I typically associate with little kids, um, not having a conversation. Mm. 
I've been talking with other parents about if we have our little kids distracted on devices or even just distracted in general while having a meal, how do you learn the art of conversation over a yeah. meal? I mean, we used to do that in my house every single night growing up was that was the time for the family to come together, to connect, to talk about what's happened through the day, celebrate the highs, talk about the challenges, problem solve, discuss world events, anything, anything yeah. and everything. That was the space. And it was enjoyable and I've got really great memories of that. I think a lot of people are missing out on that now and I'm wondering in the future how we're going to have this generation of kids who can't have a conversation. Mm. Um, I, I don't have the answer. I can't see into the future, but it's definitely mm. a concern. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not against technology. I'm not saying that we should get rid of it altogether. I think we just need to be aware of the potential negative unintended consequences that it could have at the same time. And of course, the more... It's a very good question because the more separated, the less human interaction we have, the more disengaged we feel, the more disenfranchised, the more alone we feel. Yeah. You know, and we have we are seeing the levels of loneliness in people is increasing, especially for career women. You know, we're having an epidemic of 35 plus year old women now that I will never get married. They will always be single. Now, some women will say, yeah, wonderful, that's great. I never wanted to get married, you know, but the majority of women don't feel like that. They would like to get married. They would like to have had children. So, yeah, we, get, we, we have to reverse that. I think it's important if we do. Hmm. But just to clarify, how will we then address this? How will we humanize ourselves again? Put the screens down. It's not that hard. Put the screen down. Notice the person that is right next to you. Put that screen down. It, it doesn't get any more simple than that. Put the screen down. Don't binge <laughs> so, so many series. You know, uh, get to connect with the person. Start, start with your family. You know, I think one worrying trend right now is in relationships. How is intimacy happening in the bedroom if they're both with screens? Good question. Well, how about starting the human interaction there? Have more sex. <laughs> Have more sex. With your partner, of course. <laughs> Keep it clean. <laughs> but hey, that is the human interaction. Make sure that you are interacting with uh, your significant other. Have a conversation. Get, it, get, it, get involved in their lives. Do you know what they did during the day? What they, do they think? Is red still their favorite color? Or has it changed to yellow? How do you know? You know? So start there. And then take it into your kids, talk to them, play with them, take them out. Make sure that they're engaged with life, that they're jumping, they're running. Make sure that they're running outside in the street. I don't see kids running outside and playing outside anymore like we used to. Because that was a good thing. They were talking to other kids. They were learning from each other. Thank you for that question. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.